In today's aviation news recap, there's brand new Boeing 787s being delivered to a major airline, Qantas underperforming to a certain extent, and Air Canada expanding amid an airline shutdown. Let's begin with Qantas, and alongside several updates that have now been covered on the channel, the airline also published its first half of 2024 financial year results, which saw pre-tax profits down 13.2%. A pre-tax profit came in at AUD $1.25 billion, which is, yes, a strong amount, but still down year over year. As Qantas cites, the decrease in the overall costs of airfares as the industry normalises as a key catalyst why they reported such. In a direct statement, Qantas really addressed the losses that were encountered because of this, coming in at a $600 million drop in profit because of the lower fares, and therefore the reduced revenue per available seat kilometre. Despite a lower pre-tax profit, the airline did see net revenue grow across the first six months of the financial year, towards a UD $11.1 billion. Ultimately, this represented a 12% rise from the first half of the 2023 financial year. Qantas also went on to say that throughout the first six months, it was able to strategically invest in its customers. With the introduction and also the announcements of major changes that are set to come to its global network. Notably, the airline saw the delivery of the first two Airbus A220s to be deployed at Qantas Link, with these two aircraft completing crew familiarization flights across recent months and are slated for an entry into service momentarily. In fact, depending on when you're watching this and depending on when this video goes live, there's a pretty high chance that the A220s are already flying with passengers aboard. Away from new aircraft, the airline also said it'll at long last roll out Wi-Fi across international flights, referencing the investment in more so its digital platform. Despite having a pretty strong international network if you really get down and analyze it, and also some of the longest flights in the world, Qantas has actually been very behind other airlines, with no Wi-Fi offered on its international product. In fact, it's far and few between on any of their services that Wi-Fi are offered. This includes the brand new 787s that are less than a year old. Qantas believes it needs to continue making these investments to ensure that its long-term customer satisfaction levels can continue to grow upwards. However, these investments also align with the broader group's mission to restore confidence lost by its customer base, after we saw a lot of revelations in the past, say, three years that weren't exactly ideal. The chief executive, Vanessa Hudson, who replaced Alan Joyce, said that in December 2023, customer satisfaction levels returned strongly. The view is that with more of these investments turning from an announcement to a formal element in the offering that they put out, they'll see customer satisfaction levels only rise. Qantas went on to also add that its freight market saw stable performance, primarily underpinned by the e-commerce strengths that we're seeing in domestic markets. However, the group did say that while there were many successful bits, such as the modernization efforts of its fleet, the freight demand struggled, with freight revenue being down around AUD $200 million. This is in line with some analysts believe demand there is softening after a recent surge. This, though, in several markets. Not all. On to the next story of today, and Etihad Airways has in the past few weeks taken delivery of three new Boeing 787 Dreamliners as part of its continued move towards Journey 2030, which holds ambitious growth plans, it must be said, and I'll get onto that a little bit later, but the three additional aircraft now bring the Etihad fleet to what they say is 88 units, and the fleet has experienced its ups and downs. The downs probably originated from a major aircraft order in the early to mid 2010s, resulting in too many aircraft being ordered at once and therefore the losses mounting. Journey 2030 arguably represents the first major fleet expansion since then. 
Etihad says that the three aircraft will enter service this month. The 7879 deliveries also follow the 7871010's arrival in October 2023, with several international destinations added to the network, and notably, these aircraft will make flying towards locations such as Boston, Bali, and Nairobi possible, with Nice, Malaga, Mykonos, and Santorini during the summer. See, even if it's not the Dreamliner directly serving these locations and more, these 787s can replace planes on existing services, thus freeing up those previously occupied jets to launch elsewhere. They could be higher capacity aircraft or lower capacity ones. Either way, there is a stress and burden taken off the shoulders of these planes. Let's get on to Journey 2030. So, Journey 2030 is what Etihad says will play a pivotal role in its long-term future plan, and hopefully at its conclusion, allow it to cement itself as a leader in the Middle East. Generally, as part of the initiative, the airline will look to extend its global footprint with new destinations, frequencies, and increases, and a whole lot more on top of that. The company hopes to be flying to over 125 destinations and leveraging its geographical positioning of Abu Dhabi and the Middle East to its advantage in connecting markets east and west. And on top of that, Etihad wants to more than double its fleet to over 160 aircraft, which again would represent the second most significant fleet expansion in company history. But they will certainly hope that this expansion will be not only a lot more measured, but in the end successful. On to the final story of today, Air Canada has announced in response to the Lynx Air shutdown the expansion of its own network to help customers who have been affected. A move to expand can equally be viewed as a means to help support those that were planning travel with Lynx. However, it can also mean for Air Canada a way to capture more market share as quickly as possible following the collapse of a competitor in the same market. Either way, and ignoring their intentions, the airline will add over 6,000 seats into select markets. This took place from February 26th, and these measures should provide customers with affordable economy class options throughout locations in Canada, the United States, and Mexico. Air Canada believes responding to a fellow Canadian Airlines demise is essential, especially to provide an adequate option for passengers who were unable to rebook, say, their travel plans this winter. The Lynx Air shutdown came at the end of last month, and a decision to close came following many attempts that failed at securing investments. Lynx Air was a relatively new airline to the Canadian market. It also equally aimed at being an ultra-low-cost carrier, or ULCC. However, this market has proved pretty challenging to crack, and if you're trying to operate low-cost and even ultra-low-cost flights, nothing is really on your side, and sustaining that for the long term has proved tricky. Unfortunately for customers in Canada, or those just generally attempting to travel to and from the country, that would include me, we are therefore faced with increased fares, and on numerous occasions, priced out of travel. That's going to conclude today's aviation news recap. If you have any thoughts, well, you're more than welcome to drop them down below in the comments. Thank you very much for your support here on the channel. It certainly does mean a lot. Do take care. Do also be safe. I'll see you same place, same time tomorrow for your latest industry recap. And flight, and we'll fly.